do part two based on the experimental procedure. It says to add water and acetone. So I add about three milliliters of water and I would add acetone. Um, so I have the acetone because the fume hood had, makes so much noise. I had to take it out of the fume hood to use it on the bench top uh, for a recording purpose. So I'm going to add one milliliters of the acetone to the test tube. And I want you to observe and record your observation. Basically what you're trying to see here, if there are one layers only or two layers have form. So if the, if the um, two compounds that I mix water and acetone, if they are miscible, if they dissolve, is going to form one layer. And if they don't dissolve in one another, if they are not miscible, it would form two layers. Next is water plus hexane. So I would add the test tube about three milliliters of the uh, water. And I would add one milliliter of hexane following the procedure. And it's best for you to read the procedure before you watch the video. So you have better idea of every step, what is being mixed. So when you mix the hexane with water, even though the line is, uh, is kind of a faint, line here very easy is not very easy to see but if you look closely it would be different from the other one that you had so this was the acetone with water and now i have hexane with uh, with water you are going to describe what happened if it was miscible if it did dissolve or it did not dissolve for the next experiment or next part of the experiment I am going to mix water with naphthalene. This has to do with the polarity of the compound. If the molecule is general rule for solubility, uh, polar compound would dissolve in polar uh, solvent. I know that I, I know uh, it says use 0.1 gram of the sample because I did write the experiment. So I do know the experiment. Uh, but I'm going to use, you know, about 0.1, as long as I don't use too much to saturate the solution with the uh, with naphthalene, it should be fine. So I would just use few crystals of naphthalene, few pieces of naphthalene, uh, shake it well, and examine the solubility. Now, for solubility of solid in liquid. If the sample disappears, it would be soluble. If the sample does not disappear by mixing well, by agitating and mixing it well, if the solid does not disappear, um, basically is forming the two phase. So please observe closely and record your observation for your lab report. Uh, for the next experiment, we are going to examine naphthalene again, but this time we are changing the solvent. We are not using water as the solvent. Instead, going to use toluene, which is an organic solvent. It's non-polar solvent. Going to use naphthalene with toluene. So that's the toluene. You read the label, it's the toluene. And I would use toluene, about three milliliters of toluene to add to the naphthalene and see if it's going to dissolve or not. And you be the judge because you are the one recording the observation. And you would agitate and look for the result of the experiment. If naphthalene disappears, it would be one phase. And if it stays there, then it would be uh, two phases. Okay, so I'm turning it around so you could see from different angles. Sometimes you would think that there is solid here, but in this case, 
um, I don't see any solid and you can, um, you know, record your observation. Even with this background, it would be better. So you have the solution of naphthalene in taurine. For the next mixture, we have copper sulfate. And I did bring copper sulfate is a blue color um, crystals. I have the container for you here, and that is copper sulfate, copper sulfate. I'm going to add water to copper sulfate. Okay. Copper sulfate is ionic compound. It, it is expected to, um, to dissolve in water. But I wanna see if it gives me blue color solution or, or not. So I will be stirring it and checking for the color of the of the solution. So copper sulfate start dissolving, and uh, we are going to save this for the next step of the experiment. And I can show you like in a, in a while uh, for complete disappearance of the, of the solid. But the blue, you see the blue color solution that is being uh, formed. For the uh, next step, we have copper sulfate mixed with silicon dioxide or sand. And we are going to separate that. I have to use some techniques for separation here because copper sulfate, as we see here, it dissolved in water, but sand is not going to dissolve in water. So what I'm going to do in this next part of the experiment, I take the mixture of the copper sulfate with the silicon dioxide, I place in a beaker, and as I add water, the blue color solution is forming at the same time. If you look at the bottom of the beaker, there are pieces of the sand that no way that is going to, uh, to dissolve. So to separate this, I'm going to have to use uh, gravity filtration, which I need to set it up, but I'm going to wait for a couple of minutes for the copper sulfate to dissolve completely. And what I have as the solid, it would be only sand. So there should be no blue color uh, precipitate or solid. Everything should dissolve before I start my separation. I want to set up gravity filtration as one of the techniques that is used in general chemistry and also in organic chemistry. But for setting up the, the gravity filtration, we are going to use small iron ring to attach to a ring stand. This is a support for a glass funnel that we are using for our uh, for the uh, filtration. Now. To prepare the, the filter paper, I take one large filter paper, I fold the filter paper in half, fold it in half again for second time. So I fold it in half first, I fold it in half again, second time. Then I open it one part to one side, three parts to the other side. What I don't want to happen, like if someone folds it like this and it's going to make a hole, like the crystals or precipitate is going to pass through. So what you need to do after you fold it twice, one part in one side, three parts in the other side. You've basically made a paper funnel, you place it in the, glass, uh, in the glass funnel. See, it's not staying still. And in order for this to stay still, I'm going to add a few drops of water. When I add some water to the filter paper, the filter paper is going to stay still. 
we are doing filtration. So we want to separate the solid from the liquid. We want the solid to go on the filter paper and the liquid would pass through the filter paper. So I'm going to pour the mixture through the filter paper. And because I want to transfer both of them through the, to the filter paper, I can mix it. So to make sure that everything would go, otherwise the solid piece, especially in this case that we have sand for this part of the experiment, it was sand and copper sulfate. The sand is heavy and it's going to stay in the beaker. So we are mixing it, agitate, mix, and then add to the filter paper. Store it well and add. And if you have leftover, in the beaker, leftover of solid in the beaker, keep adding the solvent that you were using and pass it through the filter paper to make sure that everything is going to be transferred to filter paper. Now, with this, we have separated the solid from the liquid. Liquid portion now is in the beaker. We have a solution of copper sulfate is a blue color solution in the cup, uh, in the beaker and the sand is on the filter paper. Now, if you were going to recover this measure mass or the procedure ask for further steps, uh, you can take it out of the uh, filter paper, take the filter paper out of the funnel, uh, place it in a watch glass, let it air dry, then you have dry sand. For this liquid, it can be evaporated and then you end up with the copper sulfate because that's the separation technique or physical means for separation technique.